good afternoon uh, welcome you back uh, to this course on inorganic chemistry of life uh, principles and perspectives uh, so in the previous lecture we have looked at uh, some aspects relevant to the protein uh, starting from amino acid to the peptide to the polypeptide wherein we can see n terminal c terminal uh, directions then followed by the uh, secondary structures which are nothing but alpha helix and beta sheet structures and then oh, when you have all such structures are built in the entire polypeptide chain what you have is a tertiary structure where you get the overall topology of the, uh, of the protein structure and such tertiary structures join together in a particular kind of a symmetry to give a quaternary structure and then quaternary structure is a perfect uh, uh, you know structural position for a protein to uh, give its function even in some cases tertiary structure can also be useful as a as a functionary state wherever you have uh, uh, one subunit and when you have more than one subunit you have a quaternary structure is formed. So, this is what we learned in the previous class and in this class let us try to look at other kinds of biomolecules, the biomolecules such as uh, nucleic acids and uh, you know in the nucleic acid terminology is bit different from that of the terminology of the uh, proteins. In the proteins case uh, you have a peptide and you have an amino acid. So, amino acid turns to protein here it is the other way around it is a nucleotide which turns to nucleic acid. So, you have nucleoside, nucleotide and nucleic acid as far as the hierarchy is concerned. As you can see from this particular slide uh, that you have uh, a nucleoside. Nucleoside has the uh, ribose and the base and that is the nucleoside and nucleotide has the phosphate, the ribose and the, uh, the nucleic base and that is the nucleotide. The one which is shown over here has uh, no oxygen in the second position. So, since there is no oxygen in the second position it is called deoxy therefore, this is called deoxy uh, ribonucleoside this is called deoxy ribonucleoside and on this side you, uh, you have the additional unit is the phosphate. So, therefore, once you have the phosphate, phosphate uh, and uh, sugar and the nucleic base together is a nucleotide. So, this is called deoxy nucleotide. I will come just in a while uh, the difference. The ones which you have the two structures the below, these two structures are very similar to those are the two on the top except for in the second position you have a OH that means oxo. So, this is referred as a ribonucleoside. So, ribose plus the base ribonucleoside, the phosphate the ribose plus the base ribonucleotide. So, ribonucleoside and ribonucleotide okay. and uh, uh, so the difference uh, between these two is the second position in case of DNA it is a deoxy ribonucleotide and RNA ribonucleotide uh, and rib deoxy ribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid these are the two different types and in fact the uh, you will come to know at a much later stage when we talk about uh, the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase I will be bringing more details, but let me bring uh, one or two differences uh, important points in this context. The important points in this context are in the second uh, uh, position the o, OH in the ribonucleoside these are the inputs to the human system whereas deoxy the component of uh, the DNA is not an input to the body. So, what we the input of the ribosyl nucleoside nucleotide can be converted into deoxy. So, that means you essentially remove one of the oxygen then it will go to this. So, it is called deoxy and there are enzymes which does that. So, deoxy ribonucleotides are required to make the deoxy ribonucleic acid and therefore, uh, the deoxy ribonucleotide is not an entry point to the human system and uh, this is made out of this. Uh, ribonucleoside by uh, deoxygenation process this 
ok. So, this is one thing you keep in mind. So, when we come to the enzymes of deoxyribonucleotides, we will explain uh, all this, this uh, details of this. On the right end what you have is if you connect each of these nucleotide ok, if it is if you connect the ribonucleotides you will get RNA, if you connect deoxyribonucleotides you will get DNA. So, so you have uh, the uh, uh, nucleic base, uh, the sugar, the phosphate, the sugar, the nucleic base, the phosphate, the sugar, the nucleic base and the phosphate. So, what is the backbone in this? The backbone in this is the sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. What is the backbone in the protein? The protein backbone is C alpha, C O carbon and N, C alpha, C O N, C alpha, C O N. So, that is the backbone and what is the side chain R group. So, in case of nuclear uh, uh, DNA, it is the base, nucleic base, whether it is RNA versus DNA it is the nucleic base which is the kind of a equivalent to side chain. We do not call this as a side chain in DNA terminology, we call it as a nucleic base. So, but main chain is the uh, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate ok. So, this is, so you have uh, uh, by virtue of having the ribonuclease, you will have RNA, by virtue of having the deoxyribonuclease, you will have DNA. So, let us look at uh, uh, the nucleic bases in little better way. The nucleic bases are not like uh, you know base like hydroxide or carbonate or something. These bases are coming from nitrogen containing centers. See the nitrogens having a lone pair is a base. So, what kind of base is this? Okay. This is Lewis acid Lewis base concept Lewis base. So, uh, uh, I am sure I will be explaining very soon about the Lewis acid, Lewis base, uh, those concepts are relevant to uh, all these things. So, right now take this nitrogen centers having the base. So, there are two types of nitrogen bases, uh, one is called the purine uh, and other is called the pyrimidine. How do you remember? If there are two rings, you can take it as a purine, if it is one ring only, it is you take it as a pyrimidine. So, purine and pyrimidine. What are the purines? Purines are guanine and uh, uh, adenine, so guanine and adenine, uh, whereas pyrimidines are thymine, cytosine, and uracil. Okay. So, these are the five nitrogen bases, or in other words, nucleic bases, which are present in the RNA and DNA. RNA and DNA are uh, more or less same, except for in the second position of the ribose. In one case, you have a OH, other case you have only H. So, the one which you have H is called deoxy, so DNA thing. Now, you got in the uh, nucleic acids, the backbone is a uh, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. So, the phosphate is connected in both the directions, phosphate uh, uh, ion is connected on both ends. So, therefore, you have so phosphate uh, sugar on one side, phosphate in between and again sugar on the other side. So, it is a kind of a bridging. So, phosphate bridges in these things. Okay. So, now having seen the nucleoside, nucleotide and uh, nucleic acid uh, and then we have seen the side chain here are nothing but nucleic bases. So, if one were to uh, expect some structural behavior like that in proteins, you will find somewhat similar kind of thing. So, these are again helical kind of a structures that you have. So, the helical structure that we, what you have here would basically talk about the uh, backbone. Backbone is nothing but the phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar and unto that anchored are the bases. You see these red ones are the bases. So, this is one strand and this is the other strand. So, there are two strands there and in between there are bases are there. So, what is that kind of a, uh, what is that stabilizing such kind of structures? So, since there are two strands and the two helices, the structure is called double helical structure. So, you must have known uh, even very early stage in your uh, in high school that the DNA has a double, double helical structure and that is because of these ones. Now, how are these structures stabilized? So, to understand that look at on the right side on the top for example, you have the two uh, nucleic bases, 
the two nucleic bases are interacting okay, uh, through hydrogen bonds N H O then N H N. So, you have you, the N H N hydrogen bond and N H O N hydrogen bond. So, what are the partners here? The one of the partners is thymine, other is adenine. So, it is an A T pair or T A pair, it does not matter, they are one and the same. So, you can see that. So, in one context, this is a donor for hydrogen, in another context, is accepted. Similarly, exactly mirror is accepted here and donor here. So, donor and acceptor here we refer to the hydrogen, hydrogen donor, hydrogen accept, acceptor. So, the total interaction is referred as the hydrogen bond formation and you know that such hydrogen bonds which are formed would have a good amount of stabilization energy in the order of 1 to 4 or 5 kilocalories per mole. The same thing is true even in the protein structure when I talk to you about alpha helical structures or beta sheet structures again you have the similar kind of, but the hydrogen bonds there or NH and O, but here we have NHO we also have NHN. Uh, so, as the electronegativity decreases the strength of the bond also bit decreases. So, you have A T pair this is called which famously known as A T pair, it is also called complementary pair and see the structure below uh, there are again two other uh, nucleic bases are there and one is called the cytosine other is called the guanine. Uh, so, the guanine and cytosine are not interacting just with the two hydrogen bonds like you have here, but rather they are binding through three hydrogen bonds. So, one is NHO, other is NHN, another is again NHO. So, you have very two strong and one somewhat less strong hydrogen bond, whereas here one strong, one less strong, I am not saying weak, but somewhat less strong. Okay. So, therefore, overall the interactions are very good to stabilize and now if you take this concept and see here between the two nucleic bases these are basically uh, stabilized by such kind of hydrogen bonds. You cannot see here that is why you have expanded and shown. So, A T is one pair, G C is another pair. So, these pa uh, kind of a uh, pairing is referred nucleic base pairing is called the Watson Crick base pairing and this is the reason why the structure the DNA is stabilized in its double helical fashion. Okay. Now, it is not only one kind of a uh, double helical structure, there are little differences from one double helical to another double helical to another double helical. You can see some things are clear, this is little bit more elongated as compared to this and this is much more elongated than these two. So, that means, there are some structural changes though all of them are double helical structures. Okay. These structures are referred as A, B and G, A, B, Z DNA structures, A DNA structure, B DNA structure, Z DNA structure. Okay. So, there are some uh, parameters given over here. Yeah, before coming to the parameters, let us look at these pictures given just below each of these. What are these pictures you think? Suppose, if I take an axis here and if I put my eye here and look down, then I can see this whole thing crumpled one over the other and there is an interior opening and that is what the interior opening is and all these helices will fall over the other and it will become like a circle here. So, it, this is the whole circle uh, and the interior. So, that is what you have the entire Thing. So, this comes you look from the top, if you look from the top you will find this kind of structure. So, similarly if you look uh, from the top from the B DNA you will find a structure of this type and if you find if you see this one it will find a structure of this type. So, as you can see the interior the, the portion which is uh, quite hollow in a uh, type of structure is much less. Uh, hollowness you can see and much more compact. So, somewhat a lesser field, somewhat more filled, somewhat much more filled. A type uh, DNA, B type DNA, Z type DNA. So, there are the three types. Now, let us look at the on the right side what we have. So, the A type and B type are the right handed helices and the C uh, the Z type is the left handed helix. 
So, as you can see it is going like this whereas, here it is going like that. So, this is called right hand and left hand. I am sure you are aware right hand is going in the clock direction, clockwise direction and the left hand is going towards the anti clockwise uh, direction. Okay. So, what are the differences that you can see? You can see the differences in the diameter. So, the diameter for A is 26 angstrom that is 2.6 nanometer, 20 angstrom 2.0 nanometer and 18 angstrom 1.8 uh, nanometer. So, that means, your uh, the, uh, the cylindrical portion that uh, diameter is reducing on going from A to B to Z type almost by 1 nanometer or about 8 angstrom unit that is quite a, a substantially different that is why you see the structures look very different when you look down the uh, uh, central axis. Then look at other aspect which is not of course, so clear from here, but you can take it as granted this base space how many helix. So, you know helix. So, from here to here was one screw and this base pair for helix turn there are 11 uh, base pairs are there, 10.5 base pairs are there, 12 base pairs are there. Okay. So, this how the one is uh, uh, this way one is bit elongated other one is much more elongated kind of structure. And now, so for each turn how much is the height increased? The increase in the height which is called a helix uh, raise per base pair. So, instead of for per turn for each base pair it is divided by the number of turns number of base pairs. So, you will get for the each base pair. So, it is a 2.6 angstrom in case of A, a uh, structure and 3.4 angstrom in case of B structure and it is about 3.7 angstrom in case of uh, Z structure that is easily understandable this got so much elongated. This is narrow this is much wider this is more elongated this is a perfect kind of a almost symmetric type you can see so symmetric very nicely. Now, look at the other uh, parameters uh, there is uh, the base pairs or uh, in each of this will not have same kind of orientation. So, if you take one base pair and the complementary how well they are arranged if they are exactly head on the angle will be 0. So, that is that will be uh, 0 with respect to the normal uh, uh, with respect to the axis that you have. Now, if you look at these ones a, a case the base has a tilt normal uh, uh, to the helix which is about 20 uh, degrees and this has only 6 degrees and this has 7 degrees. So, almost very similar between, between these two. So, these are some of the differences that comes for these three kind of a structures and uh, to tell you that this A, B and Z kind of a structures are interconvertible by changing certain conditions. Conditions such as salt concentration in which these are uh, immersed and the humidity or water content, humidity content etcetera. So, because the humidity will also compete with the hydrogen bonds that you have and the salt concentration will put uh, the uh, kind of a gradient. So, you under the gradient and under the water uh, uh, dipoles. So, you can uh, make this uh, structure change from A type of uh, DNA to B type of, of DNA to Z type of uh, DNA structures. Okay. So, there is something very basic on uh, the DNA uh, ribonucleoside, nucleotide and nucleic acid and then DNA A type, B type and Z type. So, I think that basic information is more or less good enough for this particular course though a lot more biological importance and essential aspects are there which are not a part of this particular uh, course at all. Okay, so, having looked at we have looked at the protein structures, the protein how it is formed, then nucleic acids how it is formed nucleic acid structures. Now, we let us smoothly get into a connectivity. Uh, so, how are these proteins for example, synthesized? So, how are the proteins synthesized and to this you can just have a look at uh, this is uh, in any other molecular biology book even in any other biochemistry book having a chapter on the protein synthesis or molecular biology aspects you would see a title called central dogma of molecular biology. So, it is the it is central to the molecular biology. So, what is central to the molecular biology? So, you have a DNA, uh, you can transcribe. So, it is a transcription process, 
and transcription will give you a transcripted version and trans transcripted version is used to express and expressing is called translation and this translation will give uh, protein. So, DNA to RNA to protein is generally referred as the central dogma of molecular biology. If you open any of the molecular biology books, biochemistry books, you will never miss to see this particular thing. Okay. So, that means you are starting from DNA and what you need? You need a copy of this, make a copy of this and that copy is referred as the RNA which is nothing but mRNA, I will give more details in the later slides. And this mRNA is used as a template to make the to translate to translate uh, the into amino acids and the amino acids are joined together to form the protein. So, how is this translated? I am sure many of you might know that there is something called triplet code, three base pairs in a sequence is together will uh, code for one amino acid. So, if there is some reading mechanism that reading mechanism will read not individual ones as a triplet code. So, the pair that the triplet code will lead to one particular amino acid. Okay. So, that amino acid uh, and the next amino acid and the next amino acid and each of these adjacent amino acids are being connected by the uh, peptide bond and the protein is generated. So, you are going from a DNA of this kind of a structure double helical to a protein may have a helix, may have a beta sheets, but not a double helix is a different kind of a structure. Okay. So, one way you can say the protein is, is a kind of a uh, daughter species coming from the DNA. Okay. Let us get a little bit more detail uh, to what I mentioned on the previous slide. What I said? Transcription to get the transcription uh, uh, to transcribe uh, the DNA. Uh, so, you need to read the DNA and then once you read the DNA make a copy of that. So, it is basically essentially copying the DNA. So, to copy the DNA, DNA being double helix you need to unwind. Okay. So, therefore, you can see this unwinding uh, process of this. Okay. So, unwound protein will be read uh, and uh, the copy is being made. So, as you can see over here, so process of forming messenger RNA. So, that is copy is uh, they call the messenger RNA and that is what uh, is uh, made out of uh, this particular and these are some details like from which direction 5 prime to 3 prime etcetera which I have not introduced to you much. So, we do not need to uh, worry just like N terminal to C terminal, C terminal to N terminal in proteins here you have 5 prime to 3 prime, 3 prime to 5 prime. Where is this 5 prime and 3 prime is coming? It is coming from the sugar moiety. So, in the in the sugar you have a 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 prime. And we have seen if there is some change in the 2 prime from OH to H we call it a deoxy just like that. So, similarly uh, you need to use that. So, then you have a DNA anti sensing strand then this will open up then read and make a a copy of this. So, the making the copy of this is referred as the transcription process and this copy is used as an mRNA, this mRNA is referred. This is the copy which we got from the previous slide and this particular mRNA copy messenger RNA, M stands for messenger. So, it basically it gives uh, the uh, between the DNA and going to the protein it is a messenger like uh, system. Okay. So, this has got you can see very clearly a C, U, etcetera, etcetera and these are all nucleic bases and as I said three nucleic bases together will become a triplet code. And now, this entire process occurs at the ribosomal system uh, and you can see I am not going into more details of the ribosomal uh, fractions. There are two different fractions the ribosomal, but I am not going into the details of that. So, all that you need is to read a triplet code and this triplet code is transmitted to the tRNA and the corresponding tRNA is activated and each tRNA will pick up one amino acid only. That means, there are different uh, tRNAs for different amino acids. So, the tRNA basically 
makes a complementary contacts with the amino acid and brings it to this particular region and therefore and drops it here. Then the next one, the next one and then there is a uh, other enzymes which will basically make uh, a bonding between the two adjacent uh, the amino acids and as a result you start making the and building the protein. So, this peptide, peptide is built. So, this is the first one, the second one like that. So, keep uh, shifting. So, you will shift here also. So, this is the track on which the ribosomal shifts and reads. Okay. So, ribosomal uh, system is a mechanism to read, translate to tRNA and then hold it for uh, bringing the right amino acid. Then the right amino acid is being connected to the previously existing amino acid to form a peptide bond and it grows. So, uh, messenger RNA, mRNA from transcription, then ribosomal RNAs and then transfer RNA and transfer RNA is specific for each one of the amino acid. So, synthesis of protein in cytoplasm by ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA and tRNA. I think there is a lot more details which I have not given which biochemists and biologists study, but I have kept purposefully aside because that will be out of focus of this particular course. But knowing this basic thing is rather good enough and after this protein is being formed actually many things happen and whatever happens after the protein is formed is called post translational modification. You know translational means uh, protein synthesis. Protein synthesis at the ribosomal is referred as the translational phenomena and post translational after being synthesized then lot of modifications. One of it is in fact getting the structure protein folding is a huge research area protein folding and protein when it uh, initially synthesized does not fold. So, starts folding only when it uh, acquires a minimum size of the protein etcetera. So, that protein folds only when it folds into the secondary and then tertiary then we can see the function as I told earlier. Besides this other things can may also happen. So, there are some proteolytic cleavages, uh, some inactive precursors etcetera, this will be under signaling that means starting etcetera, those things will be removed after the total synthesis is done. Then there are some kind of covalent modifications are also occurring. Such modifications could be glycosylations, could be acetylations, could be hydroxylations, could be methylations, could be phosphorylations. So, all of these when you see in a protein they are not during the protein synthesis, but after the protein synthesis. Okay. And protein splicing, uh, so internal region is removed and NNC terminals uh, regions are rejoined. So, by this time you have really made whatever the uh, next level of the protein which is suitable for utility uh, for the uh, for the rest of the future uh, purposes of this. So, uh, in other words at this stage you can expect a matured protein or a protein which can exhibit a uh, secondary tertiary and quaternary structures are being formed hence this can be used for functional activity of this. So, in effect in this particular lecture what I have talked to you is as follows. Uh, initially I have introduced in the previous lecture the amino acids, uh, peptide, protein, protein structures. Then I have taken you into a new newer type of biomolecular systems. In the newer type of biomolecular systems I have explained you the nucleic base, nucleotide, nucleoside, nucleic acid and the double helical structures, the A structure, B type of DNA and Z type of DNA and their uh, characteristics and these are being can be these can be modified or maintained or transformed by using uh, salt concentration variation or the humidity variations etcetera of all these things. Then we enter into an arena of how such a protein is being synthesized from DNA, DNA to um, mRNA to uh, protein which is uh, nothing but 
the central dogma of molecular biology and in this you make uh, DNA a copy of the DNA which is called the mRNA and the mRNA is used by the ribosomal system to use uh, it as a template and, and translate into the uh, amino acids then followed by stitching them together to form a, a peptide bond and to form a protein and then followed by that protein maturation and protein post translational modifications. Uh, thank you very much.